It's now time for the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, iTunes, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and the themikewagnershow.com. Mike brings you great guests and interesting people from all across the globe. So sit back, relax, and enjoy another great episode of the Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be here on the Mike Wagner Show.com. You can check our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen at Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, Apple, and more. Take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. Also follow the Mike Wagner Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with a wonderful lady from Nashville, Tennessee. She's a singer, songwriter, guitarist, and she's got um, an album that she put out in 2017 and currently working on a second one and kind of um, just conjuring up uh, images of old Nashville when you get to here. She sang with uh, Mara Morris, Old Dominion, Michael Ray, David Nell, Dylan Scott, Lone Star, and many more. She warmed up the fans for Garth Brooks and Zach Brown Band. I mean, this, this is just an amazing performer. And uh, once you get to hear her live, you'll think back to a good old country as well. Live, ladies and gentlemen, from the beautiful Music City, ladies and gentlemen, the next Nashville superstar, Chelsea Carter. Chelsea, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. What an introduction. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's what you get, and we have nothing to bear to do, but we'll give us something to do. So we'll get you <laughs> up and going here. You're working on a second album. You've been a singer, songwriter, artist, guitarist for quite some time, and uh, you sang with Mary Morris, Old Dominion, Michael Ray, David Nail, Dylan Scott, Lone Star Moore. You also warmed up the fans for Garth Brooks and Zach Brown Band. And before we get into all that and your second album, tell us how you got started. Um, you know, I can't really pinpoint anything. Um, I can remember growing up and driving around the car with my mom and, you know, doing car karaoke to Shania Twain and Bruce Springsteen and all the all the oldies but goodies. And uh, I just kind of always knew that this was something that I wanted to get into and performing was something that I was kind of meant to do. So um, it just kind of meticulated from there. And uh, here we are today, still doing it and loving every second. <laughs> I can imagine you singing to um, kar- karaoke to uh, Bruce Springsteen and Shania as well, too. And um, ha- have you got involved in like um, any, um, like like say with the um, the talent shows or, uh, you know, say taking like in any, you know, learn from any music greats or anything like that? It sounds like you just um, kind of jumped in from like uh, kar- karaoke to uh, what you're doing right now. I kind of did, you know, I, you know, I was in some bands growing up in high school and all that. And then I I went to school for classical voice, actually, which doesn't really relate to what I'm doing now, but it was still great training. Um, And I I just went to a lot of shows, a lot of concerts, I just kind of studied what everybody else was doing. And between that and me just kind of naturally figuring it out for myself, their experience, I kind of paved my own way. Mm -hmm. And who just said the best concert you ever seen was? Oh, gosh. Okay. Well, I've cried at a handful of concerts because they were so moving for me. Um, But if I had to kind of pinpoint it down, um, I saw Elton John with my mom when I was in college. uh, And Elton John is another one of my favorites. I cried for the first 30 minutes of that show because I couldn't handle how amazing it was being there. Um, So that's embarrassing. But now everyone knows. So (laughs) welcome to my life. (laughs) Um, Another great one. I got to go Shania Twain. I saw her last year for her little reunion and it was amazing. Actually, it might have been two years ago now. I wish it was last year, but I think think it might have been two. Oh, wow. And they're all in Nashville when you saw these guys? No, no. So I went to school in Providence. So Elton John was downtown Providence, Rhode Island. And then Shania Twain, I saw her with my mom in Boston. Oh, wow. I'm originally from Boston. So I, I go up to that area pretty frequently. And oh, you're, oh, you're originally, oh, you're originally from Boston. Okay, because I thought yep. you came from uh, <laughs> Nashville. So what was the one moment that influenced you going from um, the Providence, Boston area over the Nashville? 
So I was playing in Boston uh, multiple nights a week, but it was mostly cover songs, um, which is really great. I got a lot of experience playing live, but I was kind of, I kind of had this like missing piece, like in my soul, as stupid as that sounds, but um, I just kind of wanted to start writing more and I wanted to start putting out my own music and playing more of my own songs. Um, And I just kind of felt like Nashville was the place to do that. You know, like it's the heart of songwriters in the USA. So I packed up, came down here, made some friends, met some people and we're still just pushing along. That is amazing as well, too. And of course, you know, you're doing some songwriting and uh, lyric writing and everything else. What do you base mainly your uh, your lyrics on? Like, say, about like your personal life or something happened to you, some good times or maybe some events that went out in the world these days. So what do you base most of your lyrics on? Yeah, so 90% of my lyrics are very personal. Um, it's things that have happened to me or things that I want to say kind of thing. I, I use songwriting as a way to, to kind of send a message, if you will. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I like the sound of my own voice, but no one wants to listen to me talk. So if you put it in a song, then they listen to that and you get to say what you want to say. <laughs> <laughs> and, and of course, we got one of your um, songs coming up as well, too. But who are some uh, other favorite artists and singers growing up? Okay, so Vince Gill has been another one of my favorites. Um you know, also for the singing, he's got a voice that is just silky as butter, but his guitar playing also has really kind of shaped who I am as a musician. Mm-hmm. Um, just like that twangy fast picking that he does and like uh, one more last chance of like Oklahoma borderline. It's just, uh, it just speaks to me. Um, and then I also grew up in the 90s and 2000s. So boy bands were a big part of it. Britney Spears was a big part of it. You might not know it from my music, but I still listen to Millennium, the Backstreet Boys album, pretty frequently. So, mm-hmm. wow, <laughs> it's a big old mixed bag. <laughs> and of course, you talk about guitars as well, too, of being, you know, Vince Gill, part of that group. And who are some of your other favorite guitarists growing up? Oh my gosh. Okay, so guitarists. So I start off with Bruce Springsteen, obviously, because he was right from the beginning of my childhood, um, and then. Actually, sidebarring for a second, Bruce Springsteen led me to saxophone for Clarence Clemens. I pretty much wanted to be him when I was younger. Oh, love Clarence uh, Clemens. Oh, my gosh. Just amazing, amazing artist. Um, but I kind of started going back towards guitar again because I realized that it was not super easy to sing and play saxophone. And I wanted to do two things at once. So guitar came back along. Um uh, Brent Mason, honestly, has been another big one for me. Um, I'm really into like fast playing and like quick fingers, but in a way that's also melodic and has some substance, if that makes sense. So I think there's some beauty in players that can play really fast, but then they know when to play fast and they know when to take it down. They know when not to play at all. Um, and I learned a lot of, of those skills from uh, Brent Mason and Vince Gill. Wow, that is something, too. And um, we'll also play one of your uh, songs as well, too, from your debut, and we'll talk about your second album. But first, you listen to The Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. 39660 or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show, get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the Mike Wagner Show.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, Apple, and more. Take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. And also follow the Mike Wagner Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with singer, songwriter, guitarist Chelsea Carter, originally from the New England area, coming to Nashville just um, doing her work, strutting her stuff, and she has nothing better to do. Well, I'm just kidding. She does have something <laughs> better to do. Here's the title track from her debut EP going back a couple of years. Nothing better to do. Chelsea Carter right here on the Mike Wagner Show. And 
Chelsea Carter, the title track uh, here on the Mike Wagner Show. And tell us more about that album and the title track, Chelsea. Yeah, so uh, Nothing Better to Do was my first EP that I put out. Um, So I was really excited, first off, because it was really my first step into songwriting. Um, And Nothing Better to Do in particular, uh, this song actually kind of stems from a true story in the sense that, you know, I've been cheated on a handful of times, but... um, you know, I was just joking around. It's actually funny. I'm going to go into the full story because it's funnier this way. But I was actually talking to a guy's parents who the guy ended up cheated on, cheating on me later. But um, this was beforehand. And I was just joking around. And I was talking about a different guy. And I was like, yeah, you know, he just had nothing better to do than like this chick, you know, wherever. And uh, that's where that line kind of came from. And then it ended up working out. <laughs> that it ended up being about their son. So, you know, funny the way the world works sometimes. (laughs) And it sounds like it did have something to do as well, too. And, of course, that's being heard all over streaming as well, too. And you're working on a second album. Uh, Tell us a little bit more about that. I am, yeah. So my second album, um, when I moved to Nashville, I spent the first two years just working on songwriting, I was not worried about putting any music out. I was just songwriting and just playing as much as I can because I was trying to hone my craft as much as I could. Um, So the second EP that I am going to be releasing is super exciting because I think that it is some of the best work that I've ever done. And I think it paints my picture better as an artist. Um, You know, the first EP was amazing. I'm always going to be proud of it. I'll always love it. Um, But I don't feel that it is, it fully encapsulates who I am. Um, And I think a lot more of my personality is going to be coming out in these songs. Um, But it's still that same quirk that the last album had. Um, And there's a lot more different topics explored too. So this, this album is much more um, a biography of my life and, you know, feelings that I'm having and whatnot. So I'm, I'm really excited for y'all to hear it. And, and when do we expect the uh, release of the second album? Um, so hopefully this spring. Um, currently we're running a Kickstarter to try to help fund it. Um, that'll be ending in February. So, uh, or sorry, March. It's February now. Duh. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> okay. that shows okay. how out of whack I am. I need a nap. <laughs> <laughs> or, or a coffee maybe or something. Or a drink? <laughs> Man, dude, coffee puts me to sleep. I know that's super strange, but I could I take a nap right after I drink coffee. 
Oh, really? Okay, I have to remind yeah. myself not to give you a coffee, maybe a Budweiser yeah, or a no Jack coffee. or something. <laughs> hey, you know what? Budweiser's always going to be a good call. <laughs> there you go. There you go. And, of course, you had some fun up on stage, too. You sang with Mira Morris, Old Dominion, Michael Ray, David Nail, Dylan Scott, Lone Star, and others. Just uh, tell us about uh, some of the people you uh, sang with and um, what's it like and who is, like, the best one you've uh, sang with? Yeah, so I have been lucky enough to be involved in shows um, that are in- include some pretty big names, as you just said. Um, I couldn't tell you how I got them. I just got real lucky and got very fortunate that I was asked. Um, but they were all very different, which was super cool. Um, so Mary Morris and uh, Old Dominion and all of them were for a street party in Boston um, that was run by the local radio station, the country station, Country 1025. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was super cool because if you know anything about Boston, anything about the Red Sox, it was on Lansdowne Street, which is the big road that runs right next to Fenway. So they closed down that entire street and they had a festival all day long. Wow. Um, just country music. And it was just the coolest thing ever. You know, House of Blues is on that street. There's a bunch of bars, just like classic little bars. Um, So it was just, it was amazing. And, you know, naturally the whole time I'm thinking like, man, I'm playing at Fenway, which really I'm playing outside of Fenway. But, you know, there's details. (laughs) Don't let the truth get in the way of a good story kind of thing. (laughs) When when you played over at Fenway, was that the year the Red Sox won the um, World Series? I think that was, what was it? um, Was it? 14, 15, somewhere around there. Yeah. Yeah, it might have been. I'm going to be honest. I'm a hockey fan myself, so I don't know a ton about the Red Sox, which don't tell my Boston people that. <laughs> Boston is a very we'll proud keep it a secret. City. Okay, Patriot fans. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, don't get me on the bus with them either, because I don't pay any attention to football. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> or or you could play at the uh, TD Waterhouse as well. I'm still used to call it the Boston Garden. I don't know why. So, <laughs> I mean, but, everybody calls it the Garden still, so you're not... Mm-hmm. Out of the loop at all. Right, yeah. And, of course, you also warmed up for uh, Garth Brooks and Zach Brown Band. And uh, just tell us what's it like, um, you know, being with Garth Brooks and uh, Zach Brown. So it was super cool. So I wasn't actually with them. Um, I played in the venue before them. So it technically was not an opener. But, um, you know, every single fan that went into that show passed where we were playing. Um, so it was super cool because no one was expecting us to be there and every single person stopped and hung out with us for a bit. So, um, and there's just so much community with both of those bands, you know, Garth Brooks is such an icon that his fans have been around forever. And same as Zach Brown, like, you know, he's, he hasn't been around quite as long as Garth Brooks, but they both have the same kind of like inclusive vibe and just some of the nicest people are going to those shows. Mm -hmm. Um, so we got, uh, we got a, we met a lot of people. We made a lot of good connections that ended up actually leading to more gigs down the line. Um, and then it was just, you know, it was the experience. Like we got to go watch the shows after and it was just the coolest. Nice. Okay. And I think I know why people are calling you to play because they think you have nothing better to do. That is a very program. Exactly. Or, 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 or you could do like a nothing better to do uh, part two or part two saying that, um, hey, what are you doing? You have nothing better to do? Come play and do something like that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's what I figured, you know, it's like if people think I'm bored, I'm going to be the one they call. <laughs> there you go go and and of course you know speaking of uh big plans we'll talk about what's ahead for 2020 and more you listen to the mike wagner show at the mike wagner show.com powered by sonic web studios visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all he needs look at a professional website without breaking your budget sonic web studios is the answer sonic web studios offers fast affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away call today at 1-800-303-3960 that's 1-800-303-3960 or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com mention Mike Wagner Show, get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the MikeWagnerShow.com. You can check our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. 
Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, Apple, and more. Take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. Also follow the Mike Wagner Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with singer, songwriter, guitarist Chelsea Carter from the New England area, now in Nashville. And of course, she had nothing better to do in 2017 but play the title track, and you can hear it all over, and led to something better to do with working on a second album. She sang with Mary Morris, Old Dominion, Michael Ray, David Nell, Dylan Scott, and more warmed up for fans for Garth Brooks and Zach Brown, and just an amazing future that she has. And, um, you know, speaking of amazing, what do you have plans for uh, 2020 and any uh, upcoming plans for a possible tour in 2020? So that's actually what I was just going to say. Yeah, 2020 is just going to be a year of hustling and a year of touring for me. So I I recently signed on with a manager and a booking agency, so they're kind of taking the reins with that. And we've got a few dates booked up in the New England area so far, but we're hoping to branch out nationally for the rest of the year, which uh, once my album comes out, we'll start getting more dates in the books and yeah, hopefully we'll be coming to wherever you guys are listening. All right, that'd be great, too. And, of course, besides the New England area, and um, is there anywhere uh, that you guys have plans as well, too, outside of New England? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, we're, we're looking out at the West Coast, like Oregon, California area. Um, obviously, around Tennessee, our southern southern family in Georgia, um, Florida, and Kentucky, and then also Texas are, are big markets right now that we're looking to get into Mm -hmm. and of course you know we can get all the information we'll uh ask you where can we uh get get the information on your website and everything else and of course um in in terms of being on stage and everything like that or in music what do you consider like your most defining moment or your funniest moment Ooh, that's a tough one um I mean, I don't know that I've had a funny moment in particular, like for myself, but I've seen a lot of things happen, um, you know, playing bars and stuff. I don't think people quite realize that they can, you know, they're not the only ones looking at me. I can see every single one of them and everything that they're doing. Um, so one of the funniest things that I remember happening was we were playing in this bar in Boston um, and we were there every Saturday night for, for like three or four years. Mm-hmm. Um and it was it was in like the basement level, so the ceiling was a little bit low, but you know not low enough that you can't walk around. But there were some exposed beams and whatnot, um, and it got real crowded. Like it got sardine can style oh my in this bar. So you know shoulder to shoulder, um, you got to kind of squeeze through to get wherever you're going. But we were in the middle of some song. And there's this guy trying to get through the crowd. He's got his beer above his head, trying not to spill it. And then (laughs) next thing you know, it hits one of the beams and he dumps it on himself. And that was super funny. But that was even funnier is he didn't even notice that his entire beer got dumped on his head. He just kept walking and pretended that nothing happened. (laughs) (laughs) And and probably yelling, free bird! Oh, probably. Yeah, free bird or wagon wheel. Wagon wheel seems to be the new generation's free bird. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised and maybe we can all sing that along with free bird, make a medley or something. <laughs> oh my gosh. Just make an awful medley. <laughs> <laughs> and, and of course, that sounds it, terrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe after a few beers, it, it will be so terrible. And then I don't uh, know. <laughs> and, and, and also too, if you're to put together a band and you say, pick any famous musician, like on drums, bass, guitar, keyboards, and everything, who would you choose as your ideal band and why oh are we going whole band or like one superstar um it it can be a whole band or one superstar at a time it's your choice or you can mix them together all right here we go so first off vince gill would be my guitar player because as i've said before i'm casually obsessed with him i think he's one of the greatest guitar players of all time um so he's got that lineup for lead guitar um i would also like to hire Britney Spears uh, back in her 20s when she was younger in her prime to be a backup dancer because I don't dance, but I think dancing is beautiful. And I would like to have some of that on stage as a little visual aspect. Mm -hmm. Um, And then Shania Twain has this drummer currently. Her name is Elijah Wood. She is amazing. She plays with the most energy that I have ever seen anybody play with. So she would be my pick for drums. Um, and then, you know, bass, let's just see what we get. Let's throw a line out there and see what cool people we meet. 
<laughs> Bass players interested? <laughs> yeah, who wants to come play? There you go. Our superstar group. <laughs> all right, sounds good. I'm glad you got that all uh, squared away here. And who do you consider biggest influence in your career? Ooh, biggest influence in my career. I think, I don't think I can pinpoint one person. I think, you know, as I've been saying, I have a lot of different influences for different reasons. So I, I don't really know that it would be fair to, to pick one person. Um, you know, songwriting style, uh, Shania Twain again has been a big one. Merle Haggard and Waylon have been big ones. Oh, my favorites. Um, oh my gosh. You just, uh, can't go wrong. They're amazing. Also Willie Nelson too. Willie Nelson is just a superstar all around. Oh yes. Um, just amazing. I saw him a few years back and he played just as well as he did in his youth. And it blew me away because mm-hmm. he came out all frail and rickety and you're like, Oh boy, this isn't going to be good. And then of course he blows everyone away. And of course I, th- I remember he saw him in 1980, you know, myself and start with Whiskey river ended with whiskey river. And that's almost like his um, signature tune. I mean, I think he did what about maybe 40 songs in between that. That was a lot of songs. I'll tell you that. Well worth it. Yeah, he goes for it. The other thing I love about him, too, is he's got a lot of family members in his band. Like, I think his sister or someone plays keys for him, and his son Lucas plays guitar with him a bunch, although he's got a budding career himself now, too. Mm -hmm. Um, It's just so nice. I love the family affair aspect. Yeah, that's one of the best things as well, too. And uh, what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? Um, best advice I think is to just do what you want to do because there is not a ton of time, which let me clarify because that sounds super grim. Now that I hear that out loud, uh, life is short. And as you get older, you start to notice that you can't do the things that you wanted to do when you were younger. So if you don't do them when you're young, you're not going to do them. So do it now. Mm-hmm. Enjoy your life, and of course, <laughs> and of course, for some people, they say you only live once, so that's all I can say here. So. Exactly. You know, right. Depending on who you ask, you only live once. So that's right. Yeah. <laughs> once again, Chelsea Carter, singer, songwriter, guitarist from uh, the Boston, New England area in Nashville, and uh, she um, has her debut, "Nothing Better to Do," working on a second album. And uh, a big thank you for your time, Chelsea. Looking forward to having you again soon. Been fantastic. And before we go here, once again, tell us about your upcoming projects, your website, how to people contact you and where can people purchase or listen to your music yeah so uh my new cd will be out hopefully this spring it's 2020 um and you can find me online chelseacarter.com my socials are just chelsea carter music um for instagram and facebook i am not cool enough for twitter um and my music is available anywhere you can get hard copies of my cds on my website and you can also stream it anywhere online spotify apple music amazon all the good stuff so Let me know what y'all think. Sounds great, Chelsea. Thank you very much for your time. You've been fantastic. Looking forward to having you again soon. Do us a favor. Keep us up to date. And uh, looking forward to having you on again soon. Thank you so much for having me. It was a blast. Thanks for listening to The Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and themikewagnershow.com. Please support our program with your donations at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again next time for another great episode of The Mike Wagner Show. 